Well, good morning once again everyone, and welcome to day two of sorting out some storage space in the loft. So as you saw, remember from your last video, yesterday I removed that massive great water tank from in the middle of the loft here, and also pulled up some of the, um, the wood and supports and things that were underneath it. So today I'm going to continue clearing up a bit more space. I think that's just going to be a quick montage or sped up bit at the beginning of the video while I move some stuff around a bit, just to create a bit of space and let me get at things. And then I'm going to use these, these um, flooring panels here and lay them out along here. And I measured them up a little while ago. I reckon they're about the same length. There's two of these joist gaps. So maybe there's some sort of standard going on here that I'm not aware of. But that's quite convenient because it means I can um, hopefully put the first one down and have it overlap half of the the joist and then put the next one down have it using the other half of that joist so they'll all be supported at both ends. In the middle here is going to be slightly harder because underneath here there's quite a lot of stuff that's already been mounted onto the joists and not really been done with a great deal of thought for what's going to be how it's going to be used in the future. So I might need to cut some of that up or trim it or I don't know we'll we'll have a bit more of a think about that when once I get a few of these down and see how it's going. Most of this wood is, I think, complete junk. It's either pieces that are too small to be useful or they're just in such bad condition that I wouldn't want to actually use them for anything new. It's a bit of a shame that I have to keep, that I'm, that I'm having to keep them at the moment, but as I keep saying, quarantine, corona, lockdown, all that sort of shenanigans, means that we can't take it all to the tip just yet. So I'm just gonna have to stack it all here, out of the way and deal with it later. Blind here, great. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here that needs to be got rid of. Right, that's a bit of space created. That's a good start. Next thing, let's tuck this insulation in a bit better. And these three three bags of it in, in this gap here works quite well. Fits perfect, well, reasonably perfectly. So I'll just tuck that down there. But before I can get any further, I need to get the, um, the floor panels out from underneath all this carpet. So that's going to be my next step. There we go, there's my first piece. And these are... Right, these are designed so they've, they've got these um, ridges on the sides so that they'll actually lock together, which is quite nice. So once I've got the first one of these mounted, I can then slot the second one into it, and so on. Now let's see. Okay, they seem to be a tiny bit longer than I thought, which is unfortunate. If you look here, I've got it over the well over the edge of the um, rafter on this end, but then at this end, yeah, it's, it's about the right sort of half overlap that I was aiming for. So. That means if I screw it down there, assuming all the rafters are the same distance apart, I'm not actually going to be able to use it quite as I want to do down towards the other end. That's a shame. I was hoping to be able just to put them one after the other in a long line all the way down there and they'd all sort of fit together perfectly and, and just neatly fit the, um, the spacing here. So there we go, this goes right up in the corner here, which is going to be fun to drill, but never mind, we'll uh, find a way. And I need to make sure that this end it's only halfway across. That's going to make it tricky to screw it in place, actually. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's actually going to work. It's going to be a bit narrow, but I can give it a shot anyway. And over here at this end, it overlaps a little bit, but that's still well inside the, uh, the edge of the hatch and will give me plenty of room to get in up and, up and down the stairs, uh, the ladder. And I can then put in a second one next to it here, the third one, and then start to worry about whether I'm going to be what, what to do with all that stuff. Okay, so as usual, with this sort of thing, I'm going to start off by drilling a small pilot hole, or a series of small pilot holes rather, so that I can make sure that the I don't do any damage to the wood underneath when I uh, put the screws into it. So I'll start off with one here. Now because the, um, the load on these is going to be entirely downwards, that is, they're, they're going to have things resting on top of them. They're not, these screws are, are more to make sure that they don't shift anywhere rather than to make sure that they're actually held particularly strongly. I don't feel that I need particularly enormous screws to hold them in place, or a particularly enormous number of them. So these sort of screws should be absolutely fine. Now because this is the first one, I'm going to go relatively slowly and put in the first screw straight away after I've drilled the hole for it, just to make sure that nothing shift, shifts while I'm um, faffing around with things. Okay, so now that one's in, that's going to prevent the um, thing from moving while I do the rest of the uh, work around it. So I can, I can more safely drill the rest of the holes without worrying quite so much about it shifting. Now this one's difficult because it's underneath the, um, the, raft, the slanty rafters. 
So I'm going to, I'm just going to go in at an angle. The, the screws bed themselves well enough into the chipboard that it's, it's not going to matter. And in the middle. Now this is the part I was worried about. It's a bit close to the edge of the beams, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully once I finish this, it'll be a bit easier to clamber around in here and I won't be trying to balance on these things quite so much. Right, that's, well, it's gone in reasonably well. It's not quite as nice a connection because I have to worry about the, um, the, the smaller overlap between the board and the rafter so that I can get the second row on as well. So that's one board fitted and this should mesh up with that one quite nicely. So there we go. Because they tongue and groove together like that, it makes the whole thing a lot more secure because they're spreading the weight a little bit between them. So it's spread, just generally spreading the weight out across as much space as possible to make the whole thing a bit, a bit stronger. So now I can do exactly the same thing again with this one. Having a drill with a light on the end of it is actually really useful. You don't sort of think about how useful it's going to be when you're doing jobs in reasonably well lit places, but then when it's somewhere like this that's kind of dark and gloomy and the lighting is a bit limited and always behind your head so you're casting shadows, you realise just how useful it is. All right, now we come to the tricky bit that I was mentioning earlier, because I've put two of these boards in across here, but I don't think a third one is going to fit because of this bit here that's just going to get in the way. But I think this is going to be slightly too big. Oh no, no, I think this is going to fit actually, I take it back. I can just get it over the lip. Yeah, that just fits. That's really, that's really good actually. I was thinking I was going to have a huge empty space here that I could easily fall through. <laughs> But having it fit in like that is rather, rather nice. Okay, time to do number three. So at some point in the future, I might take another one of these and cut it off about this sort of length. Then I can pull this piece of wood out and lay it across here so it doesn't interfere with this piece that's uh, holding, the, holding the ladder. And I could then potentially take these out as well and build up across that way, or I might not. We'll, we'll, we'll see what I feel like later. But for now, having, having a, a row of three going out this far, and then another row of three all the way across there, uh, sorry, another row all the way across there, should be pretty good. They give us lots and lots of space to play with, space to put stuff we don't really care about, space to put, put stuff that we just want to get rid of temporarily, like these chairs that we use when we have parties and things like that, and we need a bit more seating space for people. But we don't want to have them cluttering up the lounge all the time, especially not when it's full of gym equipment. <laughs> So, I've just decided to uh, read the instructions that I've found inside the, um, in the, inside the packaging for these boards. One of the things they recommend doing that I haven't actually done is staggering the boards. So this one should be halfway up here, so you get a sort of a, a brickwork effect. Um, that does seem like, I have to admit, that seems like a good idea but it does mean I'm gonna to have to go out and cut some of them up in order to, well, cut this, pull this one out and cut it up, uh, which is gonna be a bit of a faff. I don't know if I can be, really be bothered. I probably should. It does say where possible. I mean, I could just carry on being lazy because it's not like we're gonna see a lot of foot traffic up here. This is, this is, just, this is entirely just gonna be a storage area. So I think I'm going to ignore that instruction and just not worry about it for now. <laughs> so, actually, no, I'm going to go back on what I said earlier. I think doing it the way the instructions say and having these things overlap is probably going to be a good idea. So what I'm going to do um, is that means I need to shorten this board. And, well, I need to unscrew it. Hopefully I can slide it out even though it's in, in place and got a board on either side. But the tongue and groove should allow it to slide out, I think. Yeah, let's do that first because that way, even with the overlapping not working quite perfectly, I should still be able to get a decent amount of strength in there. And hopefully everything will hold. I've had another thought. I don't need to pull it all the way out. If I just slide it along, then I could push it along to the next beam, and that would mean I could then cut another one in half and put that in as the first half of this one, rather than having to redo the whole thing. There we go. Slide that to, <laughs> it's hit the next rafter along. That's not a problem. There we go, halfway along there. Now I can just do everything back up again. And we should be good at this. Now I'm going to go through these holes with the drill again because <clears throat> the chances of the pilot holes underneath lining up with the, the holes I've just I've now slid across to meet them are pretty small. Okay, so I need to measure that gap there. I need to measure that one. 
So the other possibility here is that I bring up a saw other than this one because that's just going to make a mess and I'm going to damage something I don't want to. And then I cut off across here and then I can rest the next one of these in there too. Okay, for that I'm going to need a saw. Ha! There we go. This is going to be slightly awkward. Okay, I'm starting to get quite close to the rafter now. In fact, I've I've, no, I've left a scrape down it, but not actually cut into it yet. Hopefully that'll be enough to just do that. <laughs> this piece is nailed down in the middle and here. So let's try the old favorite of just pulling it out with ha by hand. Maybe I'm going to need a hammer for this. Or not. Ah, brute force and ignorance. Okay, that's that out. <clears throat> and that can go on the junk pile with everything else. So now I need two pieces of this. One that's about 61 centimetres, and that matches the overlap here as well at this end. So it could be anything from 59 and a half to 61 would be, would be okay for this. This one's going to have to be a bit more precise, ideally, because I'm going to want it to fit in right up flush against this, but also getting to this point, midpoint of this beam, so that I've got somewhere to mount it. So that one needs to be 60. Now it's 122. That's why we're getting some overlap at the end up there, because it's 122, whereas two joists is 120. Right, here we are once again outside, where there's much more space for doing exciting stuff like sawing planks up, and it doesn't matter quite so much if I get sawdust everywhere. <laughs> that said, the loft isn't exactly in the tidiest of conditions anymore, but it's all going to disappear under the floorboards, so I'm not sure I really care. And also, it was already fairly bad up there, and I don't think I can really clean it, because there's so much of the so much of the fiberglass insulation around and stuff, and it's just generally a mess that I suspect I need to, if I try and vacuum or anything, or sweep or anything like that, I'm just going to end up picking up all of the, all the insulation with it. Okay, let's try and find a pencil sharpener. All right. Turns out pencil sharpeners are not a thing in my life, apparently, but fortunately knives are, so I've been able to get a point on it anyway. Okay, so that's my 60 centimetre piece for the one that needs to be a bit more precise. And then the other one was anywhere between 59 and 61 and a bit, I think. So let's go for 61. That'll make it stick out to be more or less flush with the other pieces, which is quite nice because it makes it look deliberate. Right, here we go. Oh yeah, eye protection. That was what I remembered after the um, after doing the, doing it last time. There we go. Safety third or fourth probably. Okay, that seems to be quite well lined up. There we go. Let's try using a, a wood blade instead of a metal blade. Not a dead straight line, but I sort of compensated for the bad start with uh, going a bit too far the other way on the finish, but I think that'll do quite nicely. Here we are again, back up in the loft. Now I've got these two pieces here that I've just cut, so... They seem to be almost the same length, so I've obviously messed up a little bit there. This one is slightly longer though, so that must be the piece that goes here. So let's jump this one in, make sure it fits. Now this is going to have to go in horizontally because I've already because I've already got this down, I can't just slip it in and put it, lock it in like that because it needs to come in from both sides. So let's try and do this from underneath. This is going to be interesting. There we go, that's going quite nicely now. Maybe if I hit it hard enough, it'll just scrape a bit off the bottom of here and it'll go into position. Okay, next piece is this one. Oh, there's a bit there, so I've possibly broken by standing on it. Great. Yeah, so it turns out you need to be careful of the edges of these, because when there's nothing in the, 
and there's no tongue in the groove, it's kind of fragile. One of the nice things about this is the further I get along with this, the easier it's becoming to move around up here because I'm laying more floor down. So it gives me a bit more space to play in. Yeah, so on this one, I can't get this tongue into this groove or rather this groove around this tongue because there isn't room to pivot this up because of these, these joists. So I'm gonna have to push it all the way down there and then come back, slide it back in again, which is a bit annoying. How that meshes? Yes. Okay, so that's in the right place now. It just needs to slide like a metre and a bit down, down the loft the other way. Let's see what we can do without falling into a bedroom underneath, hopefully. I can't put another one on the end of there, really, because there's not enough overlap on the end of the on the end of the beam because these are slightly too long. As I said, I measured these, they come out, turns out these are 120. So as you can see there, yeah, that board comes right up to and slightly over the edge of the... In order to get another board on here, it would either be flapping loose in the gap there, which is a, a bad idea because then you don't have any strength and if you put it as soon as you stand on it, you, it, it breaks and if you're really unlucky, dumps you through into the room underneath. Or cut a centimetre or two off this board so at the middle of the, so at the end of the board is over the middle of this joist. And that will mean that it's, really, it's able to rest its weight on it and hopefully I can screw it onto it. But also that the next board that I butt up against it will also be resting on the joist. There's now a nice overlap there. That's just about big enough for me to get screws through into, I reckon. More importantly, there's room now for the next next piece to rest on there. Yes, yeah, so all of the tongues and things match up. Put that in like that. Oh, I love it when a plan starts to come together. Actually, there's this TV stand. Oop. Is that going to make it easier to cut on or not? I could put it across the top of it. Yeah, this is another of those sort of random bits of junk that came with the house to put it nicely. <laughs> Alternatively, got abandoned here when the um, previous owner didn't clear up very well. That was much easier. Oh, I wish I'd start doing that from the start. I think now these are all cut, so for a bit of a change of pace from all the sawing, I'm going to run along and drill all of these and then screw them down. <sighs> and there we go. in there. All right, there we go. I've, I'm going to have to stop at this point because I've run out of boards to put down. <laughs> that is, in fact, all of them. I, I mean, at some point in the future, I'll probably get some more of these and actually finish it off and, and do the rest of it. Oh, but not today. That can wait for another time, I think. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll come back for the next one. And I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.